Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome to another edition here. Hello Hello, there, Al (laughs) Sentegato. Get your blazer. Yeah, making a room. We have so many people in here. That's great. Yay. Yes. Hello, Dean. Let's see here. Everybody's starting to come in this Thursday. Uh, So uh, I got a phone call and I was doing things. And of course, my fish was never done on time. And uh, we got some interesting encounters out of Alaska. Oh, wow. So, uh, Can we imagine like, out uh, there, man. Like, uh, mm, let's talk about your encounters with your uh, troll cameras. And somebody was telling me about their troll cameras and their friends. And they're like, uh, you want to go to Alaska? And I'm like, I am on it. And uh, so uh, me and somebody's going to. Maybe put a trip to Alaska. Hello, Lorna. Nice. Welcome. Missy nice. Hammer. Welcome, nice. everybody. So he's going to work on the details, but he's actually going to get some pictures today. Awesome. Uh, it's wild. So I told him when the time's right, I'll bring him on the show and let him tell the story. So what we got yeah. going on today, Barb? Today we have Kenny Thibodeau, and I think that um, probably a lot of you know of him. He's a, a dog man researcher, um, and he's the, um, oh my gosh, I... Um, director for Maine. He's getting director, right, right, <laughs> of the main chapter. I'm so sorry, Ken. He's just a great guy. Um, has helped me with a lot of um, reports that I, you know, that I would get like directly about dogmen or even even like some pictures that I wasn't sure um, people send. You know, you know, Grizzly how it is. People send you pictures. Right. You know, oh yeah, I get and I'm like, I Yeah, get and I'm like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so and I, I got some today, and they're like, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to send that picture to you. And I'm like, ma'am, I've seen everything and everything underneath the sun. So, and, and she was like, I unsend it. She unsent it. I was like, my eyes already seen it. You can't take it back. But anyways. Yeah. Yeah. And she asked me, you didn't screenshot that. I'm like, man, what the heck? No, no. Anyways. But hey, dry bag you, Dan. Welcome. Oh, nice oh, to have you. Round of applause for you. Brian hey, Brian. Uh, so, Harley, yeah, I was just talking um, about some things about you. But anyway, let's bring Dan or Dan. They see you got me laughing. Kenny, Kenny welcome. <laughs> what's this picture I'm looking at? I mean, that is not you. Come on. Man. No. <laughs> so um, that's actually an amazing image that my co-host Brookster uh, drew of myself for our podcast. And I, uh, I can't undo the picture now. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so um, no, it's it's uh, super cool. She's an unbelievably talented uh, artist. And um, long story short, is I have a great iPhone and tablet that I've been doing a ton of stuff on, and then I have a out of date Chromebook that has for some reason decided it will no longer update, which is oh, telling me I cannot just use tell me my... you know, you're just having a bad hair day. I know better. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I can't you use have my, a bad hair day? <laughs> but I can't hair? access my webcam. Oh, I'm Kenny's picking it. his hair, aren't you, Kenny? <laughs> Kenny's this beautiful so hair like laughing. all that's, Women would want, yes. want hair like that. Uh, I appreciate you. My nieces do uh, get a very much fun kick out of uh, coloring it and messing uh, around. So neat. it's that's definitely all right, Kenny. I'm gonna come on the show and not tell anybody. I'm gonna wear a toupee. <laughs> <laughs> that is so amazing. Yeah. Well, uh, welcome though, Kenny. Thanks. Absolutely. For, yeah. Um, can you just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Kenny, for the for anybody in the audience that that doesn't know. That doesn't yeah, know. no, for sure. Definitely. Um, first off, I appreciate the opportunity to being able to sit down and speak with everybody. I did uh, get a chance when I was first rolling to sit down with uh, mm-hmm. Henny and Chris, which was pretty cool a few months back. So that was always, <clears throat> excuse me, a great opportunity. And um, before I dive into anything, I definitely got to make sure to uh, shout out the North American Dog Man Project and uh, Jody Cook and Shane Michael mm-hmm. Chris. Yeah. And, uh, Everybody else that's really helped me um, gather a ton of knowledge and be given a proper uh, opportunity to collaborate with people. And also got to make sure to toss out a shout out for my co-host, Brooks there. And uh, yeah, so pretty much I have just been trying to put together a really good presentation of uh, dogman encounters and activity, uh, whether it's ranging from the United States or globally. So uh, a lot of the encounters I do get from overseas. Um, I do a ton of collaborations with uh, Lilith, uh, Deborah Hatswell. She's amazing too. So um, obviously I have not been able to um, 
venture over to Scotland. Uh, nice. So for, for her to always be able to uh, call me and uh, send me messages and encounters and pick my mind and update uh, my knowledge is uh, really appreciative of as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I'm just really trying to I have a good community um, and spec of individuals uh, I've been able to uh, put around me and stuff like that. So from uh, here on out, it's just trying to make sure that the proper narrative um, surviving this being put out there and uh just where that one to, where'd that come from <laughs> sorry kenny did you hear that i don't know where i'm hearing voices where did i that did i did i don't know not <laughs> oh, boy. are your dolls um kenny we have a question um have you yes. seen dog men um no so i have never seen anything paranormal based or um anything cryptid or out of the realm um, I just try to subjectively and objectively look at things throughout my existence. And uh, I consider myself a individual of science. So um, I try to always just dissect things and understand them. And I know that since around 290 BC, you have people that I've been reporting seeing um, cyanocephali, the upright bipedal, you know, human like dog creatures. And now Fast forward to 2023, um, I have a lot of people that I value their opinions in life and just in general that I've had encounters. And um, so I have to step back and be like, OK, well, what is it that these individuals are seeing? I mean, obviously, some are uh, going to be misidentification just because it was a quicker encounter. And uh, other times <clears throat> um, people are, are on seeing something. So whether I can solidify that it is a you know bipedal upright wolf. I have not seen that, but I do know people are seeing that, and there's mm -hmm. evidence supporting this. So uh, my goal is to sit down and put as much free time and effort as I have into uh, just researching it and getting out the proper information to people, and also um, allowing people to be able to access everything as much as possible. Um, and I don't know. I'd like to answer questions without necessarily having to speak. I'm always willing to speak. But for example, with my Facebook pages and the videos I put out, um, my narrative is to try to answer questions for people uh, without having to sit down um, and actually speak. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. It's and that's um, that is I, it's unusual, but it's great coming. It's, you know, it's a whole different like um, aspect of of getting into research like you had said you're a, uh, you consider yourself like a man of science so you're really looking at it you know from in all and and you're big into history so you're really looking um at it from all those aspects yeah. you know, it's right? super so unfortunately uh, a lot of people don't there's certain things that we don't realize sometimes so like i was trying to explain to uh, one of my friends the other day uh, that was potentially having <clears throat> some issues with technology he was using in certain areas and things like that and uh, i was trying to explain that magnetic poles and forces are something that naturally occur mm -hmm. um, throughout the existence of earth so there are certain minerals and rocks and things like that that are, that are going to cause um electronic type waves that can drain your battery i mean it's no different than when things are extremely hot or extremely cold and things like that so um there's just always potential reasonings behind things but once you filter through the reasonings and then some of the uh, pieces don't fit in that's when you need to look at it you know either objectively or subjectively to be like okay well how is this occurring and why did that occur mm -hmm. Um, one of our viewers is asking, um, cave drawings can't be faked. Can they, do you think that they can be faked? Um, I, so, I mean, obviously it, it can't, it can't be faked in regards of it being created by somebody. Um, but I would assume human beings back then would have still had some sort of creative side, uh, inside of their mind. I mean, I've seen some cave drawings of a uh, handprints which in my eyes basically solidified these individuals being like, Hey, I existed. Like I, I lived. So, um, I would, I would assume the majority of the things they are, they are drawing, they, they were seeing, but again, they could have also put on a potential creative aspect to it. Um, to, I don't know, basically try to understand what it is that they're witnessing. Um, there's, I mean, if you look at like medieval times and things like that, um, 
we weren't the most educated and uh, we would think that just because it was dark outside that every every creature and everything was you know out there in the woods to get us and things like that and not saying that things like that aren't out there but it's natural for people when you fear something to try to understand it and then p paint your narrative as to why it's occurring mm -hmm. make it bigger than what what it really is sometimes. like the fish game yeah like if someone catches it like when you're a kid you know <laughs> and like by the time it gets back it might have just been like a blue fish and then that was like a great white you know so it, <laughs> yeah yeah it's super that's why it's really important to you know speak to people when things are fresh and and not really uh get you know i mean second and third hand uh, um occurrences aren't it's still knowledge but it's it's always better to directly be able to speak to the individual um but sometimes people obviously are potentially traumatized from their interactions which is why they you know if they want to get that knowledge out there they'll have somebody else repeat the story for them mm -hmm. so cat from australia says uh they have fake ones in australia and uh, there are been ones that have been fake but however uh, scientists can debunk those. Yeah, I was going to say that they, by, they by telling the yep. right. right. So, so there I mean, are methods they can they can debunk. Of course, this. of course. Right. But like you were saying, with with sci, like I would assume the scientists could be able to tell like when the like what mineral was used for mm -hmm. the, and like how how weathered it was and stuff like that. But yeah, no, of course. I mean, just like with footprints and things like that. I mean, that was a, a big thing in the Sasquatch field that. Jeff Meldrum was able to kind of start being able to debunk the ones that didn't have the dermal ridges and didn't have uh, the impressions when they stepped down and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, anyone that's going to be educated on that topic should, if they are good at what they do, be able to pick up on that. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And the million dollar question, what is Dogman, Kenny? Um, all right. So obviously, um, this is all just, you know, my theories and things like that, because until, uh, you know, we can actually all either figure out what it is. Um, mm -hmm. that, that's pretty much what we're all working with. But I tend to, throughout history, when people uh, would use the term werewolves uh, and things like that, I feel that falls more into the category to me as the skinwalker aspects of people that would be shape-shifting and uh, changing their form. So if someone saw you changing into an animal, then you're now taking on the form of the werewolf. And I would say in my eyes, I believe those potentially could be the people that might uh, be able to travel back and forth through portals and stuff. That's not really my uh, my area of expertise, but I would say that that's my solidification on that. But when someone says, I saw an upright black werewolf, that doesn't mean they're seeing a skinwalker. That's just a very common term that some people are using to describe something. Mm -hmm. um, but now the dog man, so when I approach the dog man and dock it, it's a, it's, it's, it's a loose terminology in regards of you have people uh, that have told me that they've seen a dog man that looks more coyote like the coyote man. I have people that have said it's looked more fox like uh, in Kentucky. You have the bearzilla where people say it looks more uh, dog like grizzly sized bearish. So when I report and work on the dog man, I have it under those categories of um if someone reports it to me that it looks like a coyote that's still being uh recorded in my research as um the dog man because there are different variations but they are the upright bipedal could have like a maybe a potential more jackal looking head uh, german shepherd type like head but i believe that the dog man is not capable of taking on human form uh as a skinwalker could then change its form i believe the dog man is in that form um and the reason I, I kind of tend to believe that is I would say in maybe half or maybe a little less of the cases, um, there's always some sort of unknown DNA that's canine based that has been being picked up. And if the government is telling you that it's unknown, well, they obviously know what the unknown aspect is. They're just telling you that it's unknown canine DNA. But if it wasn't canine based, then why would the slobber being found on people's cabins and do and like uh, cars have canine DNA? Why are some of the hair samples and why do the footprints have like the padding like canines and things like that? Um, so that leads me to be in the direction more of it, as I said, just being in that form and not changing, but basically just being something that we haven't fully potentially had a chance to uh, document yet. Mm. 
Good point. Right on. Yeah. Um, so I, I am not really, I don't, I'm a little, I'm confused personally, and this is just, um, What's the difference? And I think you kind of explained it, but if you can get into it a little bit more, what's the difference like a werewolf and then, um, you know, and a dogman? And then there's, wait, there's uh, another one that's in the middle. What was um, some something else? What is it? We were talking about that one day, Grizzly. Do you do you recall what the terminology is? I don't remember what it is now. Um, the lichen. So many. Yeah, the what? Yeah, lichen, lichen is one of them. Yes, yes, that, that. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, if you look at throughout history or even in some of the more modern uh, movies and things like that, that's when you get more of the, um, you know, the full moon aspects and like the silver bullets. But if you dig back into history, uh, I mean, those type of entities can still shape shift without um, the full moon um, mm -hmm. being being at, at, like the trigger point. Um, but yeah, no. So in Skinwalker lore and things like that, I mean, um, again, it's not necessarily my area of specialty, but I do have a ton of indigenous friends. Uh, like one of my really good friends, Nuxium Brother Nature, is uh, actually a tracker for us in the North American Dogman Project. And he's um, <clears throat> he's taught me a ton just through oral history and also some of the written histories mm -hmm. that have been um, subjected throughout our existence. And he has taught me a ton. So I, I really believe that to become a skinwalker and things that he has told me, you need to do something nefarious, sinister, whether it's taking the life of somebody close to you or just something that is taboo. And then as you've done that now, you become solitary and less human and more animalistic. Um, I would believe those would be the people that would have the ability to be shape-shifting. So if someone saw um, someone actually changing and like their face, like coming out and, and like, you know, growing hands and things like that. Or if uh, some of the older stories, like someone saw someone take their clothes off and then when they chased them, they were a wolf and things like that. I would uh, put that in the category of magic using and, uh, you know, skinwalker and things like that. Um, kind of the, I guess, the taboo type dark arts um, side of things. If that did that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Um, we had another question. Um, to, to rephrase the question, how does the electronic field uh, affect the doggies uh, in her terms? So you, so you like like electronic like type wave? EMF. Yes. Um, I mean, so from a lot of the encounters that I've spoken to people about, I mean, they don't they seem to sometimes get confused. Like one woman uh, felt like it, she turned around something was trying to grab her over the fence. She claimed it was a dog man. She's in her neighborhood walking her dog. She screams out loud. It's a smaller neighborhood. Everyone turns her lights on, yells outside. Are you okay? Are you okay? And then from there, she said that the dog man kind of just felt like it's, there's too much going on. You got all these lights. Now you got everyone yelling outside and it, it lost its uh, intention span. It left. And then you have other people that um, have blared like huge loud horns um, shining uh, like your high beams in their face or taking a flashlight and putting it directly in their face, um, bear sprays and things like that. I mean, it's, it, it's a misconception to think that because you are in a well-lit area that you are going to be fully protected, but being, I think a lot of people think it's just fully a nocturnal animal, which isn't true because a ton of people have uh, encounters during the day. But just think of any animal. I mean, don't do it, but like think of your house cat. Go shine a flashlight in its face. How, how's it going to like that? Like, it's not going to like it. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like, go go blare a loud horn by its, by, you know, mm -hmm. its ear or something like that. It's, it, so having like alerted sense of smell and um, hearing and things like that, yeah, there's going to be ways you can definitely protect yourself. I mean, l listen to like a dog whistle, just the frequency. I mean, mm -hmm things like that so yeah no i would i would say that there are ways to protect yourself with that um but i do still think at the end of the day i mean if a dog man wants you it's what i tell everybody it's i'm a firm believer so uh david politis and the missing 411 does great work and things like that so i followed that over the years but 
I have a firm believing um, that a lot of the people that have gone missing in the 411, if you look at the Dogman map, like the North American Dogman map, where we ping everything, and if you look at the known cave systems and then also the areas of the national parks and the people are missing, mm -hmm. it all aligns uh, up very, uh, very eerily, to be quite honest with you. Oh. So um, I'm a, I actually am a firm believer that I think the dogma has a lot to do with that because if you look at one of the original cases like the Dennis Martin case near the Appalachia, um, there was another family that claimed that they saw a bear man or a big dog man, dog creature carrying away Dennis. Oh. And um, some of the wardens were saying that any sort of person could have made that distance in that point in time. But I know Les Stroud went down there and tried to do it himself. And he said it was it would have been impossible for that kid to have gotten there through that type of terrain so um yeah so that's kind of also how i try to approach it there have been some cases of missing people i've documented uh from some of the families and things that it just smells of dog man it just mm. screams dog man mm -hmm. hmm. um let's see this one of, some of my questions um do you think that there's um is is it possible that the g-man you know the gov are, are they creating hybrids? Sometimes we hear about that. Do you feel? So, um, yeah, like I would say back in 290 BC, as far as I know, um, we weren't able to splice things back then, which would mean why the cynocephali would have been in my eyes an existing creature. But yeah, this day and age now, I would 100% uh, say that. And the reason I say that is if you have ever heard of the click attack ape cat in uh, Washington state, <clears throat> so Dr. Lauren Donaldson and Dr. Barr were brought in uh, during the Manhattan Project and they were basically extremely good at experimenting on animals and things like that and uh, it was around the time we were teaching dolphins to basically be able to pick up on uh, potential russian spies and things like that and what the dolphins would be able to do is they would come over to you and poke you with a small in inflatable balloon that would then uh, start a, a beeping on it and it would lift you to the top of the ocean where uh, the american soldiers would be waiting for you so uh lauren donaldson and dr barr were brought in and admitted that they were experimenting on uh, apex predators. And it's also 100% documented that Lauren Donaldson made the Donaldson trout, which is basically an unkillable type fish. It can live in cold water, fresh water, salt water, all kinds of things. And so him and Dr. Barr admitted, as I said numerous times, they were experimenting on it. <clears throat> but there was a couple times where they also admitted that some of these apex predators escaped. They didn't solidify how many got out. Uh, they did say they got the majority back. Um, but ever kind of since that time period, you have people in that area now that have been reporting seeing it. It looks like an ape, wolf, like large, but it moves like a large cat. It has sleek uh, type fur like that. Mm. So I think now with some of the more variations and some of the ones you, uh, people have been seeing, yeah, I mean, the government would be uh, messing around. I mean, you have uh, the Nazis during World War II doing that. Uh, like the uh, Sally Rathis uh, case where um, the American soldiers went in and found that old uh, Nazi townhouse and they sent down those three divers in the flooded lower levels because they were like, well, what the heck did they flood down on the lower levels? What are they hiding? And two of the divers never came back. They only pulled their tethers back. But the third diver came back and um, was basically in shock. And he said he saw like all these uh, satanic type carvings into the wall which uh, it is documented that Heinrich Hitler was very much into the occult and he was uh, one of Hitler's like 1A people. And this mm -hmm. same diver also said he saw in other rooms uh, all these corpses and body parts strewn everywhere. But then in another room, he saw what looked like still alive people with like dog heads, uh, wolf heads and like a goat head. So, I mean, this is this is during World War II. And, I mean, you have Stalin that was also trying to experiment on making uh, an ape army and stuff like that. So, yeah, 1,000% one, 1, that our, our government has definitely been able to get their hands on one of them now. Um, and the reason I do say that is dogmen are really smart. But I'm going to give you an example. So raccoons are extremely smart, too. I have a friend that had to relocate some of the raccoons around his property. He'd go out and put a little bit of marshmallow and cat food. He'd catch one. And literally, his buddy is sitting right there. And then he catches his buddy, too. 
but raccoons have also been seen getting their buddies out of traps and things like that. They're smart, uh, but they still are like yum, yum, yum. So a dog man would realize it's a trap, but it's still going to go, hey, that's a nice piece of steak. So I would think it would be pretty, I wouldn't say easy, but it would be easier for the government to get their hands on one of those for sure. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, Brian Barber had asked. Um, He's the man. Good guy. Yeah, he's great. We love Brian. Kenny mentioned different varieties of dogmen. How many categories and what's the differences? So, I mean, you have some people that uh, try to, you know, venture out eight, nine, 10, 12. I try to stick with the type one, two and type three. I mean, you're going to have your variations, but it they all pretty much are going to have a little bit of a different. Some could be lanky, some could be larger, but the format is you have your more your traditional looking werewolf one, which, yeah, it could be longer, lankier, or it could be taller and more muscular. And then you're going to have a lot of the reports of the ones that say, again, taller, lankier, muscular German shepherd looking ones that, you know, could look bearish too. And then you have uh, your hyena ones, which are super interesting because at one point in time, there were hyenas uh, that did roam around North America. Um, they obviously, so a lot of people were like, well, you can see a dog, like watch it walk on its hind legs. It can, but, the, but there's a big difference in comparison of someone telling you they watch something walk over in a hunched over posture for 30 yards mm -hmm. and, and for like five or, or six feet or, or such. So, um, you, you're going to get some of the different variations, but like I said, um, when I try to document things, um, they i understand the different aspects but i would say the majority of reports i get i mean i like i had previous mentioned i've heard coyote man fox man uh jackal man but they normally are the werewolf that either is reported to look like the howling or like van helsing mm -hmm. or um i would say maybe like 30 40 percent the german shepherd whether it's dark black or the actual german shepherd colorings and then the least amount, excuse me, that I've documented would be the type three. I still have plenty of them, but it's definitely way more of the type ones. Okay. And talk about the leg structure. So it, a big thing that if you look at the legs, a great comparison. Have you ever seen um, the underworld? What is it? Uh, the rise of the lichens. If you look at one of the, like, one of the scenes in there, where uh, I believe it's like the white werewolf is walking in. If you look at how its foot is and bent back, it literally would be, in my opinion, how the foot would have to be. So when it's bent back, you, it's going to step down, right? So you have the padding part, but then also, you, you know, if you see like the back of our foot kind of, so picture now where it's being bent. So the pad is coming down, but also the bent back part of that leg is coming down too, which is going to elongate that track a little bit more as well, which is a big thing I look for um, because there are a ton of people that think they've come across dogman tracks. But the thing is, uh, learning from Nuxium and other people is that you have to really know where their track was taken, whether it's sand, snow, was there a ton of moisture in the area, uh, was there melting, because those type of things are going to cause tracks to either you know become bigger or potentially smaller etc so when you start to see the actual larger examples of the footprints you're like okay that actually looks like that could hold a creature that is six to eight feet tall potentially 200 to 300 pounds because some of like if you look at like a saint bernard footprint yeah it's a large print but it's not big enough to hold an animal upright where it could be walking consistently and fast uh, fast enough or running at you. Um, it, it's a large foot, but it's not designed for that. So when you look at the dogman footprint, it's, it's kind of, like I said, like in the shape of our foot to an extent, like you have the front part where you see the pads, but you know, like where our heel is, it's not necessarily their heel, but it's where that foot is like bent back. Um, I wish I could send you a couple images of what I mean to um, actually like, yeah, let me pull that up real quick. And Are you to... talking anything like an ostrich? So, yeah, the big thing is because we as humans, I mean, obviously, if, you know, we have different size people and larger people and things like that. But we're, our foot, I mean, we're, we're OK at walking and, and running and stuff like that, but we're not the best. 
um, when it comes to like balance wise, just because of the way it's like set up. But if you look at like a, a quadrupedal animal, such as like a tiger or like a wolf and things like that, they're all set up with the way their feet are to be able to move very quick and very balanced. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be an upright bipedal animal, um, you're going to have to have a really good sense of balance because if not, excuse me, um, you're not going to be able to keep your balance. Like mm -hmm. Barb, like, see, I just sent you two of those pictures. Okay. So if, if you see what I mean about on the back right there, how you can see the canine footprint, you can see the impression, but see how that it's, it's almost like a heel, but that's where that bent back part of the leg would be coming down and, and pushing down into the snow. So when you look at that footprint, you're like, wow, that can actually sustain a six to eight foot tall creature and they would be able to <clears throat> excuse me, keep their balance. Okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying. I just sent them to you, Grizzly. Um, I'm easy. pulling them up. And also yeah. there's a question. Uh, do they run along with Bigfoot? So um, I have actually recently been uh, introduced to some uh, pretty cool theories <clears throat> about that. Um, so from what I've also understood yeah, <clears throat> before I touch base on that, but do you see now what I'm saying about that? You can see the padding and things like that, but that could support you upright. But mm -hmm. now if you were to look at like a, a, a generalized, uh, same thing with that. If you were to look at like a St. Bernard footprint, it's a large footprint, as I said, but it can't sustain you upright. Like it, it just, it, it's not capable of that animal being able to run at you. Mm. It's just, so, um, that's a big thing right there where you can kind of be able to pick apart um, generic type dog prints and then ones that could be considered un unidentifiable. Mm -hmm. Wow. And Grizzly, what was the question now? I'm sorry. Uh, Do they run along with big players? Okay. Um, so... There are some people that I do value their opinions on that have some <clears throat> pretty interesting uh, takes on that, that how we have like guard dogs and things like that, that potentially they could be using dogmen as guard dogs, but they are not necessarily encouraging them to come terrorize people because Sasquatch are extremely smart and they're going to realize that, I mean, if your pets or your guard dogs or things that potentially are rolling with you are just sitting here slaughtering people, uh, it's not going to be good news for you. So um, I could potentially, I guess, see that I, I'm not educated enough on that yet to uh, make a ton of um, meritable uh, opinions. I mean, I've heard that now. I think maybe I can count on one hand. So like five times it does, it does have a, some interesting theories to it. Um, and it could be, I mean, if your dog escapes your house and just goes out around the neighborhood, it could, it could bite somebody. It could just be being, you know, ripping apart trash and stuff like that. So I could, I could actually see that. Cause at first I was a little confused because throughout history and in, in the indigenous cultures, Sasquatch are viewed as very like protectors of the forest and things like that. And if you look at it, like Ape Canyon, I mean, as far as I know, they shot and killed one of those and they still didn't kill the hunters. They just wanted you out of that area. If anyone thinks that that little tree house that those hunters were in was going to protect them, if those uh -huh. Sasquatch wanted to get you, that's like, no, that's foolish. They were just trying to terrorize you by throwing rocks, like get out of my area. Mm -hmm. So it would, it does kind of make me wonder, hmm, are Sasquatch aware of this are they now potentially more nefarious because if they are allowing that to occur then that means they're on board with that but then you have other cases where people have said that they wake up in the morning and the manes on their horses have been braided by something mm -hmm. well i don't see a dog man doing that and then i've heard of other people uh, saying that sasquatch will leave them like little uh, ornaments that they've made and gifts from the forest and stuff like that so it seems to me like they're cordial and and they're being such as us. So, yeah, they could be using them as guard dogs, uh, 100%. But it does, again, make me wonder what is their narrative now if if 90% of people's encounters with dogmen are considered aggressive and uh, a feeling of uneasiness. Does that make the Sasquatch in the same, uh, same light now, I guess? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, we the a question is: um, Do you think that Dogman is a uh, flesh and blood 
type of a creature or do you think he's more supernatural or so the more supernatural aspects like i was touching on a little bit earlier i would say would be the skinwalker and the werewolves um when it comes to like the dog man the coyote man bearzilla um saber wolf yeah i believe those are flesh and blood uh entities um and the reason i say that is i've documented a bunch of different cases where people have shot them and um they've seen blood spew out they've heard them scream um i mean they're leaving footprints they're uh clawing at people's doors uh windows um urinating on people's cars uh they've been seen drinking water they're eating things uh they've been seen living in dens um yeah that those all kind of scream living i guess being to me mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. the most educated in the supernatural because that's not what I uh, fall into. I have been told that, I guess, ghosts and things can leave like footprints in certain stuff like dust and things. But I have been I've never been told by anyone that they they are eating like live uh, food and stuff like that and, and mm -hmm. uh, being more acting like a live entity. So, yeah, I would definitely solidify them more as being in my eyes the living entities and then i think the dark crafts and the and the skinwalker and the werewolf type aspects would be more of your um witchcraft i guess or um type aspects yeah supernatural yes, um, yes have there ever been any we had a question have there any ever been any claws found in this you know in scrapings uh uh you know in the woods or whatever you know um, so actually yeah there uh there was I believe it was one of uh, Bart Nunley's friends that had uh, retrieved a claw from his property, and um, it ended up being taken uh, from like one of the local game wardens showed up and said that they just wanted to use it and look at it for a bit, <clears throat> and he never got them back. And then I had heard of another gentleman uh, that had didn't even tell anybody, and then uh, he had the local sheriff show up and just say that... Um, we know you have something that needs to be handed over to us. And he played stupid for a few and they're like, no, <laughs> we're very much well aware of what's been going on in your property. And they uh, took that away from him as well. So yeah, those, there have definitely been a couple of cases where people have had either like a potential tooth or claw and uh, they were unsure what it was and it was taken away and not returned. So uh, good. So Kenny, I have a former federal agent, a former U S attorney. Yep. He practiced law. He still is in law. He is getting attorneys across the country to fight first amendment. And he's going to take on these cases to where people are being pushed around by government agencies local sheriffs when it comes to these cases that you're talking about. Yeah. That's so super good. that's what if we you need. have people that are being bullied <clears throat> by unknown people or by local authorities in their community, reach out to me and uh, we good. have the staff being put together to fight back and uh, to retaliate against them. So no, that's super, that's super amazing. I was actually, uh, reading um, some interesting stuff a little while ago about how before um, technology was so advanced and now that you have people such as ourselves uh, digging into topics, it was a much easier for the government to be ahead uh, of the game and be able to, you know, go to an area and take care of the problem. And because you have numerous hikers and outdoor enthusiasts that have seen um, 10, 20, 15 <clears throat> military people, just decked out in the middle of the woods with like straight up a ton of ammo looking as if they're going over somewhere potentially in another country to fight a war. And they're mm -hmm. literally in, in the forest uh, in the middle of nowhere. So sure you could be training, but as far as I know, um, usually training doesn't use live ammunition and things like that. And the reason I say that is because I've spoken to a couple uh, of law enforcement uh officials that have had encounters themselves in areas that they were training in and they didn't have live ammunition. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I guess you could have live ammunition, but it would be extremely strange to just be in the middle of the forest uh, with that. But I think now with people getting out more uh, proper information and things like that, I don't think they're able to stay as head of the game, but I mean, I don't know if you guys have uh, heard about the, uh, the Barger case in Michigan, uh, when he was driving through uh, the Manistee National Forest, the truck driver, um, 
and he ended up shooting the dog man uh, through the eye orbit as it was trying to get into his big rig and he uh he has a couple different channels he's shared his encounter on so it's definitely worth uh, listening to him um tell what, like full detail what occurred but he claims after that that when he went to a weighing station not not right after that but like a couple weeks after when he was at a weighing station he was detained but his truck uh wasn't overweight and then afterwards he had some government officials uh show up and basically be like you killed one of our assets that we were tracking and uh, he claims after that that uh, his accounts were froze for a little bit. And then the next uh, few months afterwards, he was basically just uh, being not necessarily physically or verbally harassed, but he just was being followed all the time. And basically people just like keeping specs on his Facebook and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, no, they're they're definitely well aware of it. And I mean, there are definitely some other cases of, you know, people saying that afterwards. Um, actually, you have that case in Montana where one of those uh, farmers shot something on his property and he called in the wardens and uh, they claimed once they took it away, it was just a gray wolf, but he took a bunch of images of it and said that it definitely wasn't a gray wolf. And he had seen plenty of those throughout his life uh, when he tried to call back in to get some more uh, information as to what it was and never returned his call. Mm. Um, so, I mean, that's a pretty common, um, common theme for sure. Mm-hmm. So uh, Standing Stones was asking about the men in black. Stands the man. <laughs> After the men in black show, uh, I somebody reached out and I I didn't accept the, the call because I didn't know who it was because mm -hmm. it was restricted. And uh, <laughs> once the person told me who they were, I then was like, yeah, I'm going to take the call. And uh, we had a two and a half hour conversation and wow. uh, he was pretty fired up about the cases uh, that we were discussing how people were treated him being a former federal agent i'm not going to say what division or sure. agency but uh him and his attorneys are on the bandwagon to counteract what's going on because it is a phenomenon that's happening mm -hmm. and standing stones well, how do you fight an agency that don't identify themselves mm -hmm. And um, that was one of my questions to just, uh, this attorney. And he was very specific and illicit on how to counteract them. So I was like, oh, well, I mean, you got 40 something years experience. So, yeah. So that's your uh, forte. So I'll let you deal with it. <laughs> so we do have a screening process, Kenny, just to, you know. No, that's excellent. Because, I mean, this guy's willing to jump on a plane overnight to yeah. get to somebody's house. That's good. Uh, that's good. Yeah, that's how serious these people yeah. are. So they're not going to mess around with somebody that's hoking or poking. Yeah. But yeah. I'm just saying to you, I do like that. And the I'll, door is open. So excellent. No, thank you. Um, I guess the way too that I that I handle things like that is, I mean, I'm I I used to you know act and model and things like that. I mean, I'm, <clears throat> I was formerly in the public eye, and with what I'm doing now with my content and things like that, that I'm very well known. Um, I I'm out there, so if for some reason something occurred to me and happened um i mean it it's not really i think the best way to do it is just make yourself uh, out there you're you're available um you put your information out there and it's out there for um pretty much ever unless someone comes into my house and takes my hard drive from my computer well guess what i have it stored on my google account like <laughs> i don't know so so there's just oh wait hey, you're Kenny, gonna, you're not so yeah, no 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 <laughs> For sure. For sure. I'm, I'm just Don't that, reveal all your secrets. Right no, no, no. I'm just saying the best, way, it's the best way to do it is just put the information out there as uh, yeah. plentiful as you can and <laughs> just, you know, make time for, uh, for people to talk to them and things like that. And I mean, in this day and age, like the government, go ahead and come to my house. I'm going to live stream you on Facebook and be like, Hey, everybody see these people right now that are taking me away. I love everybody, but, uh, you probably aren't going to see me again. You, you know what I mean? So like, yeah, they'll, they'll shut you down before you even hit the live stream. <laughs> I, I already asked these questions. And he, was, he was telling me stuff and I was like, hey, oh yeah, I can only you know, imagine. I don't know. I don't know if you can see my face, but, oh, anyways, yeah. but I, I, I was just like, I, I figured, right. Cause when Bob Lazar was out on his ranch last year, I ain't going to mention who he was with. And they were talking about stuff. They probably shouldn't be talking about. And they went back to this house and they were sworn with FBI and some three letter agencies 
and they were reciting conversations they the had in the voice, book. right? Yeah. <laughs> like after 30 something years and they're still interested. Yeah, there's something going on. Well, I mean, so uh, like uh, I helped uh, Jody cook out with the North American Dog Man Project website and stuff like that. And I mean, we've mm -hmm. had uh, we've had the NRA on there and the FBI and stuff like that. Oh, no, before. dude. You ought to see some of our shows. We have people from oh, yeah. uh, government agencies come on like, hello. Of course. So if you ever notice too, that's what I always tell people that feel uh, potentially if they get trolled in their comments and things like that, that it's uh you're always going to have people that are going to be trying to uh, interject uh, wrong knowledge or wrong information and things like that. And just don't even, you know, I, I would advise anyone just don't respond to that and just continue and ask yourself why you're here in the first place. Um, I mean, if someone wants to, troll me that's fine because guess what in the past i used to be a troll growing up and you can't troll a troll um but you know, my best uh, my best response is i don't i don't even answer I, and if i do answer i just say hey thank you for tuning in i appreciate the support and just a little uh, hands up i thank you so that way <clears throat> you're just not feeding anything and i know what it is i want to do and uh what what narrative i, I want to get out there and stuff so I know the people that are supportive <clears throat> and the people that want to see, you know, myself succeed, want to see the North American Dogman project succeed, etc. So it's that's cool. Like that's all I really, you know, need and stuff like that. I mean, by so I'm a huge Tom Brady guy and a huge thing that he always used to say is uh why, you know, why give your energy to people that aren't supportive? Because people would ask how come he never fires back when people would talk smack about him and he would say that, you know, I as we grow older, we have minimal energy. So he's going to spend the energy on the people that he loves, the people that support him and his craft. So same thing with me. I'm not going to uh, give out extra information or um, give people like fire to uh, just, you know, take away from my battery charge. I'm just going to continue to do what I can and uh, spend the extra energy I do have on people that are supportive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause you're really coming at this as it's, it, you know, a, a scientific, like a journalist, um, standpoint and you know you don't have your only your opinions are only based on what your research yes, yes. at this point um so um i think it's a really good uh position to be in to i be appreciate y'all um, well basically what i want to do is uh i would really like to get dog men where um sasquatch and uh, sabe or bigfoot is now in regards of just uh having those people like the jeff maldrums the uh, late john binder nagel people that just have a stamp of approval by their name um, it doesn't make them better than anybody else in regards of existing but when it comes to scientific uh stuff it's like that guy i believe his name is scott wolf on the history channel that goes around and basically tries to uh show us how history has not been written properly in certain aspects mm -hmm. uh, he's a geologist and uh, stuff like that so it's people like that that are going to be able to take my research and the people that did research before me and everybody else to to the next level and i think i owe it to people like jody cook and linda godfrey and people that have uh, started researching before i even existed to take on their information and build off it and then uh same thing when i no longer exist to be able to take my information and, and build uh, build on that and just really be able to have a good foundation and present it to somebody when they're like, wow, um, I can't really refute this. I mean, we have pings on the map, we have footprints. Uh, it's just now, like I said, getting it in somebody's proper hands where they'll listen to you. Um, mm -hmm. I tried to reach out. I had a younger girl that just uh, graduated. Uh, she's a biologist. thought it was pretty cool what I had to say and stuff like that, but she didn't really want to touch the subject on her, uh, her, her like channel and stuff like that because she's more about for example i mean she talked about like the hobbit people but it's been documented in history that there were uh, smaller uh existing mm -hmm. people uh, so she'll talk about things like that but yeah so i guess i really just need to you know just keep on just finding people that i can help out like nuxium master tracker animal predation specialist i mean that dude can literally look at a picture and tell you what, like what happened or what that's, down. Wow. That's cool. Kenny. Wow. It, it's, it, it's, it's important. Cause I've, I mean, we've all been bamboozled, but the goal is to uh, debunk stuff. And mm -hmm. um, that's why I encourage everyone that, you know, joins our, like my Facebook group and stuff like that, like to always be cordial and stuff and just to support everybody because I, 
I encourage people to debunk something. That's the point of that. Just because something is in the potential dogman um, evidence folder, that's why the word is potential. Um, because if someone is able to come out and prove it's been debunked, that's amazing because now we can move that into the fake file and just continue to educate ourselves and move on from the topic instead mm -hmm. of uh, like the Gable film. Um, some people still claim dearly that it's uh, it's real. Um, I mean, the guy that made the film came out and said that he did it as a joke. Uh, he made a part two of it. Um, but then you still have people that are using it and saying that he was told to say it was a fake. But I mean, when you really look at it, it looks like a man in a ghillie suit running down uh, the hill. You know what I'm talking about? The G the Gable film, which is like the old uh, Michigan film of the supposed dog man right around yeah. the time. Yeah, they put that song out on the radio. Uh -huh. uh, it, it's just, it's unfortunate. I see it time and time again, just uh, larger content creators and stuff, just using fake evidence as as evidence or or giving people platforms that have been debunked and stuff like that. So um, it's it's just something that I want to try to change the narrative on and uh, just make sure that the you know the stuff I get out there has been been verified and um, and that there are people around us. So I mean I I don't have the final say on an image for example. Right. Something yeah. sent to me, I send it to Jody, I send it to Shane, I send it to Nuxium, I send it to the people that I trust their opinions, and then I wait for a response. Mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, I'll be like, okay, well, Jody thinks it's a fake, and then we'll, we'll sit down, and we'll figure it out, and then we'll all come to the conclusion of, okay, that's a fake. Um, so that's what I do with, like, everything. I mean, I have images right now that I'm still sitting on from a gentleman um, for a while now, actually before I was even in the North American dog man project um, of these coyotes that supposedly got tore up on his property, but we still haven't fully been able to verify whether or not he, he shot them himself or if this really did occur. So mm -hmm. that's why none of those things have been posted yet because um, we're not going to give platforms to people and, and, and uh, evidence unless it's been backed up because it kind of defeats the purpose, I feel. Right. Yep. Yep. There was a question that um, do our dogmen, are they um, presenting with tails or without tails or both? So um, I would say. Before you answer that question, <laughs> I want you to think hard on it. And right. I want you to elaborate on that answer, please. Okay. So um, I would say almost every documented case I have, um, people report a shaggy uh, longer tail and stuff like that. I mean, I'm not sure there are potentially some out there that might not have that. Um, and I knew, I do know that traditional werewolves and things like that don't have tails, but again, a werewolf, as I taught, uh, tapped on earlier is something mm -hmm. that can change its form and uh, is taking on another form, but to also, uh, specify on that, I have another gentleman that claimed he shot what he thought was a upright coyote type man but when he got towards it after it was a, a younger navajo man with a lower uh body that was <clears throat> coyote form with a tail and stuff like that so now you have a, a, an example of a skinwalker that is wearing the tail as well mm -hmm. um so i think <clears throat> If there aren't going to potentially be tails, that would probably be more of the werewolf aspects or the shape shifting stuff. But when it comes to the dog man, I mean, same thing with like the fox man that uh, the couple told me they saw a super long, like fluffy tail that um, looked like a fox's tail. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, then you have some of the cases of some of the younger children that said that. Uh, they were like sleeping in the den on Mr. Wolf's tail and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I definitely think they have tails. Um, I mean, it, you might have some that don't, but I would think that that might be more of the skinwalker aspects. But again, like I just said, there was that case with a young Navajo man afterwards having that tail still when <clears throat> his top form, cause he had started to try to transform back. Um, so, you don't know, it's definitely pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Did that, did um, that answer your request for you? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. What would you say um, from your research? Um, do they have a uh, like a family structure? It, would it be similar to a wolf pack or? So, I mean, if you look at, yeah. So I actually have a theory on that as well. <clears throat> In wolf packs and things like that, uh, usually pack animals uh, stay together. And unless you are 
uh, male that wants to <clears throat> try to test your dominance and you fail. So then you must go create your own pack or you are basically just kind of the, the, the dink of the group that no one wants around. So you become the lone wolf because you're just, you're not cool. So um, mm -hmm. I, I think that some of these dog men, like for example, in the Petrograd state park where David and his wife uh, saw four, at least four of them in the rear view mirror chasing after them. I would think that potentially you would have like the ones that have been booted out that are kind of just the dinks that are <clears throat> congregating together. Um, just like in society as humans, I mean, people with like minds or I don't know, it's, it's like criminals usually hang out with criminals. I mean, not always, but, if, but yeah. I'm just trying to paint the, you know, the picture that if you have a similar mind frame, you're going to, you know, click with somebody that has a similar mind frame for the most mm -hmm. part. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think that the majority of dogmen are probably smart enough to realize that if you are sitting here killing people and hunting people all the time, something's going to come looking for you. Mm -hmm. But if you have the people or the younger males that are trying to test their boundaries or just think that they're untouchable and stuff like that, I could definitely see those ones coming into people's backyards and uh, taking pets or knocking on your windows and stuff like that. Um mm -hmm. But if you look back in um, like the Spanish and Latino lore and stuff like that, that's really big down in like Paraguay and South America and stuff like that. Uh, the white ones are usually the females with the blue eyes. And in pretty much every case I've documented it as well, females are uh, not aggressive towards the people uh, whatsoever. And in uh, the Spanish based cultures, the females are usually set there to interject and try to allow the person that's having the negative uh, encounter with the male, the dark black ones or the, with the red eyes and the yellow, the opportunity to be able to escape. So basically like the females are kind of the ones that have more of the level headed mind realizing mm -hmm. that this is going to cause you, cause us like lash back if we're just sitting here mm -hmm. consistently taking people. So yeah, I definitely believe they have some sort of a, uh, hierarchy and stuff like that but they also have been spotted uh by themselves like for example in the lbl uh, i'm on the side of believing that encounter was just one dog man and stuff like that so but <clears throat> then you have other cases of them being together in packs but then you also have other cases of them traveling with wolves and coyotes and things like that like i uh just documented a case recently where someone saw um, a coyote coming up his driveway limping and he said he didn't want to necessarily go out to help the coyote, but he also didn't want to leave it out there because he felt bad. But he shut the light off for a second to uh, go uh, turn around and get his dogs in the other room because his dogs were barking. Mm -hmm. And he, as soon as he shut off the front porch light, uh, all of a sudden the coyote started running perfectly fine away. And then there was like these huge, massive red eyes uh, of this like dog like shadow that he saw. And he seems to think that the coyote was trying to lure either him and his dogs outside to help it to let that mm -hmm. dog man ambush them. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. So we got a two part question for you. And we'll wrap it up. Sounds good. Uh, dog man are aggressive. And what is the most disturbing case you've uh, come across of? Um, so yeah, for, for the, I would say around man, probably 80, 85% are definitely some sort of aggressiveness. I mean, even in some of the more docile cases, like you have a couple saying that it was sniffing around their tent and digging around their, uh, their fire pit, but the next morning when they woke up, there were scratch marks all over their car and their tree and stuff like that. So even, even something like that, I mean, if it's scratching up your car where it's very visible Mm -hmm. Is that is that considered a cordial interaction, I guess? Like that that kind of seems to me like maybe a little bit more on the aggressive side. Um, so yeah, no, every once in a while you have the ones where they might be more curious, but I, I think that those might be ones that are either females or ones that are just more knowledgeable and realize that like, we need to coexist and that you can't just <laughs> go and take people all the time. It just mm -hmm. doesn't work like that. Yeah. And uh, okay, so what was the last part of the question now, Chris? And oh, the most disturbing. Most disturbing. disturbing. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, I've covered a few that are pretty pretty messed up. Um, the Lake uh, Texacoma one, where the two brothers and their friend. Uh, I actually had Lyle Blackburn, one of my buddies, narrate it for me. Uh, super cool. But they're out fishing, and uh, they're they have an old crappy kind of boat, but they never expected to run into a dog, man. So uh, they never really changed the wires on the light. 
So as they're sitting there, the light, the light, the light keeps going out, and they're like, "Dude, get the light on, get the light on!" And their buddy's trying to like fiddle with the wire. He gets it on, and then boom, the light turns on, and they see the dog man coming towards them. Light goes out again. They're like, "Get the damn light on!" So they're did, like, "Did they have a reenactment on that on a paranormal show?" Yes, uh, that's also yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, yes. So that's that. That is a crazy Ladies, gentlemen. You need to check that one out. Yeah, yeah. The hell out of yeah, me. The, yes. Yeah. It, it's sort of nightmare. If you uh, the, these yeah. were. These woods are haunted, right? Okay. Right? Yeah, that's yes. it. Oh, yeah. yeah. What so, what was what was that like? What was the name of the area? Because you just said it was a tech. Uh, yeah, uh, te uh, Lake Texacoma in Texas. Okay. 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 So, um, yeah, no, that one in uh, their last name is Thibodeau, which is the same as mine. So okay. Straight, straight up, straight up crazy. And what's so crazy after that too is. Uh, after Lyle had narrated that and after I'd spoken to those gentlemen, he was down in the area just hanging around and he happened to run into somebody and they were just shooting the uh, crap about dogman stories. And he was like, yeah, man, this crazy one happened down here. And Lyle was like, well, that's actually funny because one of my buddies just sent me that to narrate it. And it, it was just pretty funny. But, you yeah, know, that one's Nightmare Fuel. Uh, Matt Amsh's Planet 412 case is Nightmare Fuel. Uh, Martin Gross uh, is Nightmare Fuel in the LBL. Uh, Lee Buker's case up here in Maine is Nightmare Fuel. Um, so no, there's definitely some some ones that are pretty pretty graphic. Um, but then there's a, a couple other ones that like I touched. You know earlier. what season that was? Because they're asking about it. I, I thought I was going crazy <laughs> because I was like, I've no. seen that. I've yeah, seen yeah. It it's a, so go to HBO Max, everybody. Um, it's on HBO Max. You can watch them all. I don't know what exactly season it is, but yeah. they're not the longest episodes. I think it might be the second season, but you can also Google it. I would have smacked the guy yeah. in the head with the damn moors. He wasn't shaking his <laughs> Like, get the lights going. He's like, I'm trying, so. like, but yeah, no. So, uh, but then like one of the more recent ones I covered didn't involve any uh, violence, but near scape or uh, swamp down in South Carolina, you had a gentleman come out and his truck was sitting uh, like all like, cockeyed. And as he got closer to it, cause it was early in the morning, he saw that it's front frame and axles were just completely bent out and the tires were flat and he's like what the heck and as he's looking closer to it there's all these like claw marks and bite marks and like slobber all over the grill of his truck so he calls in uh he calls in the wardens and stuff like that and they show up and there's like these unknown canine tracks all around and the gentleman i guess the officer said when they showed up, he didn't say anything at first. He literally started walking towards this field out back of his house. So the two officers are like, okay, and just follow him over there. And he still doesn't say anything. He's just looking at the field. And there's all these body parts of animals ripped all apart, thrown all around that had been like, he, he couldn't figure out why this was happening on his property. But then they go back to the truck now. And now he put two and two together. And then he starts telling the officers what occurred and uh, the DNA sample from the slobber unknown canine so again what what dog or wolf or any canine do we know that has the capability of ripping out your front axles Swamp and, gas. Uh, yeah right in doing that like where did the unknown canine like saliva yeah. come from like mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah all right last question i'm not gonna ask no more sorry so uh <laughs> I already answered it, but do you know who has dogman DNA? Who like who would have it like yeah. in, in their possessions? Yes. Oh, boy. somebody's wanting you to say it. I don't know if you know, but I know. <laughs> I yeah. personally, the, I don't really. I've actually never had a chance to speak to anyone directly about that. I mean, I've had some people that had some. All uh, right, Doctor Ketchum and Robin Haynes is working on this, and they made yeah. an announcement four or five months ago wow and they're keeping it yeah. secret they're getting funding together because i try to get it out of robin she almost <laughs> and she's like ah. I, oh, I, can't. See I see al's in here too al what's up yeah mm -hmm. he, he's like i want he's the one that asked it i wanted kenny to answer yeah yeah so, so, answer so, what? And what is, is, and why, why is al laughing at me for I, I, <laughs> hell you know i love you al i mean come on I, love love him. No, I, I just saw him pop up That's yeah all. but no but <laughs> no he's I, uh, I, I he's actually in my boss above my uh he uh he runs the northeast so uh um, oh. yeah so as as the the big so boy, repeat I, after me kenny Dr. <laughs> catch him and <laughs> yes, no, I, I love that i love that uh, yeah, thank you very yeah. no i would love to uh if they ever do have some extra time to speak to any of them because 
uh, I like to learn. Um, I think a lot of people in life and things just don't don't like to learn. And I mean, knowledge, if it's being presented to you, can be free. And I think I owe it to myself just to always be able to learn. So um, I'm, I'm always willing to talk to people and update my knowledge. And I just think people in general, but especially this field, we all, we all in life think that we know everything. And I think that's a very poor way to approach things. Um, I personally like to bring in outside information and uh, especially if it's uh, positive uh, critiques or or things that can better my knowledge, because if I just play in my own puddle by myself, it's, <laughs> yeah. it, it's my it's my own narrative. And now I'm clouding my view because I'm completely just pushing what I believe, which isn't being a good researcher um, or being a good researcher is sitting down and actually, like I said, collaborating with other people and picking their mind. And if we all have different views on things, people need to be able to be cordial and sit down and figure out, well, okay, if I think it's more flesh and blood and you think it's more paranormal, I'd love to hear why you think it's paranormal. Let's figure out what has more credence so that we can start potentially looking at it like that instead of being like, no, that's completely wrong and going on these huge rants and stuff like that. Like right. so. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Kenny. It's been a pleasure. And thank you, for everybody, for joining yeah, us. Yeah, so tonight at 8 o'clock, the Black Knight Satellite. We're going to talk about that subject. So it's going to be cool. interesting. Cool. 8 o'clock p.m. Good. And Kenny, thank Perfect. you. And no, check your messages, you too. I sent you a message. Awesome. No, I appreciate uh, everything. And you both have uh, been people that are extremely kind to me, which is why um, – I have yet to log in, Barb, to get you up there, but I promise I will. But that's why, Grizzly, I got you up there, too, for the page suggestions. Anyone that I have up for suggested pages are all people that I know personally that have uh, done really good things to help me out and also yeah, absolutely uh, give, kind, sir. give me yeah. opportunities. Thank so um, anytime I can help you guys out or anything I can do, make sure to let me know. And I always uh, love interacting with you folks. It's good stuff. Absolutely, yeah. sir. Thanks. And from Thanks. coast to coast, we'll see yep. you at 8 o'clock tonight, everybody. Sounds good. Bye -bye. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You. Appreciate Bye, you. Bye, Kenny. Thanks. Bye, Grizzly. Bye, everybody.